Do you think that it is a coincidence that the next feast day is Passover? What are the chances of this exact pattern occurring twice during a 2,500 year period? And this pattern is playing out right in front of our eyes, right down to the same month, the same city, and even the same altar. Well, let me give you a clue. It's not a coincidence. In fact, it's the hand of God, pure and simple. Hey, everybody. So I got a couple of comments I want to make today about speculators. I call them hobbyists. Let me tell you why I call them hobbyists. Um, basically, these guys get on YouTube and the, their whole entire um, their whole entire message is really they're really excited about their hobby. It's really nothing more than a hobby. Rather than admit this, though, rather than get on YouTube and say, hey, guys, you know, I'm just excited about the prospect of the Lord's return. I, you know, I want to go to paradise. I'm, I want to shed this mortal body. Um, I want to be perfect. I want to be whole. I want to be with the Lord. I want, you know, we all want this. Obviously, everybody wants this. But rather than admit that they are speculating and really just talking amongst themselves about this hobby that they're interested in, they act all pious and pretend like they're doing the Lord's work here. And, or it's a ministry of some kind. Like Barry Scarborough literally calls what he does a ministry. And, and many of these other guys do too. It's like, so, you know, they have all their fan club that comes after you if you, if you dare to question what they say. I mean, I question Tim Henderson and others for continuously proclaiming that the end is near and months go by and nothing happens and they still proclaim the end is near and they talk about Passover and they talk about uh, Purim and they talk about this and they talk about it and they're constantly shuffling the date around. And all I do is come on and say, you know what, you probably should stop doing that because you know it's not a good idea. You don't know these things. And then what I get is I get, oh, how dare you question the Lord's anointed. And, and even people like Tim are not even as mad about me saying stuff as, as his fan club, but he still acts pious. Like this is my this is my role. My, the Lord has asked me to do this. Um, that's nonsense. This guy just got on here again today or yesterday, and did an entire eight and a half minute video talking about his latest idea, putting the pieces together. And it's like these people can't wait to get on YouTube and just share it with somebody. And I think they're just trying to like basically show off their knowledge. Look what I've done today, guys. Look at the thing I came up with. What do you guys think? Isn't this cool? And then they couch it as he just did in, the, in this language. Like, this is the hand of God. Steve, it is not the hand of God. Yes, it is a coincidence. It's your imagination, Steve. And you know what, sir? We're going to find out it is. And you're going to be wrong. And then you should come on here and say, you know what, guys? I apologize to you for declaring that something I came up with is the hand of God. I'm sorry for being a false prophet. You can't get on YouTube and say something is the hand of God, and then it doesn't come to pass, and then get away with it. You shouldn't. So I want to see you on here in a month or two after all of this is over and we're on in the summertime and we're past the May 14th magical day. Once again, <laughs> I want to see you. you're on here telling everybody you're sorry. And then more importantly, tell God you're sorry. God, I'm sorry I spoke for you and said that this was your hand. I'm sorry I took an imagination that I concocted in my brain and declared it in front of all kinds of people that it's from God. I repent and I will never do that again. I hope that's what happens. I'm not going to hold my breath. Here's my second point I want to make today. And this is I'm going to take a little more time on. See, again, they're so pious and they talk about it being the hand of God. They act like their speculations are absolute truth from the word of God. I hear these words all the time. We are absolutely in the end times. But then they demonstrate they don't actually really believe what they're even saying. They say, we're absolutely there, guys. We are here, we are here, we are here. But then they don't actually believe it themselves. Let me show you a couple of examples of that. This first one is uh, good old Barry Scarborough. The rapture is near. Be encouraged. I want you to note that this was done on October 20th, 
2018, quite a, while, quite a ways ago. Because when you're living in the end times, which we clearly know that we are, we clearly know that we are. When you're really? living in the end times, it can be a roller coaster ride because you think. So here we are. We are clearly in the end times. Clearly in the end times. Here's another example. Same, same video a little bit later. You guys know on this channel we watch. We do things that churches, for whatever reason, aren't doing. We study eschatology and we study prophecy, and we're unashamed of it. We watch, we, we are excited about his appearing, we expect it soon. Rock on, okay? <laughs> Go for it. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to do. I would just challenge you to keep it in balance. When people emotionally get out of balance, mm. um, and I've said so many times before, get super specific. Well, you know, Jesus is going to come on October 17th at, you know, 10, 11, 8. Okay, I just don't see that in Scripture. I just don't see that we would have that amount of specificity. Mm. I do believe, as I've said before, we'll know the, the season. <laughs> and we know we're in it, brothers and sisters. Man, we know we're in it. Isn't that interesting? Like, we can't know the date and the time, but we know we are in the season. We know it. Man, oh man, do we know it. Hmm. Hey, Barry, by the way, just let me help you out a little bit. The reason other churches, most churches don't do what you're doing is because it's foolish, number one. And number two, more importantly, it's not in the Bible. There is not one shred of a verse anywhere that says, watch the news and speculate about when Jesus is coming back. Watching and speculating are two different things, Barry. You can watch for something without guessing when it's going to happen. You don't have to guess. The Bible never says we're supposed to guess. And, and your whole nonsense about seasons, there are two spots in the New Testament where seasons are mentioned. Acts 1 and 1 Thessalonians 4 or uh, 5. You know what it says about in those both cases where it says seasons? It says we're not going to know. Paul says, I have no need to write unto you about the times and seasons because He's coming like a thief. What does that tell you? That tells you nobody knows anything because he's coming suddenly without warning. And in Acts 1, Jesus deliberately tells the disciples, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons. Those are the only two places in the New Testament seasons are mentioned in the context of him coming. And in both cases, we're told we don't know. So you act like a big Bible believer. And, oh, I believe the Bible. You don't believe either of those verses. Here he is uh, a little bit earlier in the year, April of last year, about a year ago. It's come to my understanding that a number of videos have gone out recently uh, about the, the rapture being delayed. I want to be really clear my <laughs> thoughts on this. I, I don't believe that that's the case at all. I have always believed in... That doesn't even make any sense anyway. If there is a rapture coming, which there isn't, but if there was a rapture to heaven of all Christians... There's no, it doesn't make sense to say it's delayed. It's coming when it's coming. The date has already been set in the mind of God. He doesn't delay anything. It's not like he's like, oh, wait a minute, I was going to do it on September 23rd, but then not, something didn't happen correctly that I thought was going to happen, so I'm going to have to delay it a little bit. I mean, that, that just doesn't even, that entire concept is ludicrous. But here he is, you know, a couple videos before this, you know, we know the times, we know we're in that season, we know it. Now he's going he's gonna to mock and scoff at people who think it's been delayed because nothing happened in September. What's called the eminence of the rapture. Mm. Now, why do we believe in the eminence of the rapture? And I'm going to give you a scripture behind that. And I want to talk about the danger and really the challenge to a teaching that says, well, you know, the rapture probably won't happen for, you know, 20, 30, 50, 100 years. I, I think that's a I think that's a dangerous teaching, hmm. and I think we need to be really cautious with those that, that propose it. Now, I think recently... Okay, so now, for the record, he just used years, 20, 30, 50, 100. He just used years and said it's dangerous to suggest or teach, teach that we could have as many as 20 years left on this planet. Dangerous to say that. You know what? How Lindsay's book came out 50 years ago? Almost. 
the late great planet Earth came out 50, 50. Do you think Hal Lindsey felt like, oh my gosh, it'd be dangerous to say we have more than 20 or 30 years to go? Yeah, he did. In fact, in his book, he's like, it's looking like, you know, we're at the end of that generation and we should be out of here by 1981. Uh, I think here is where he says it again in a different way. If you think this world's got another 10 years in it, then I'm questioning your general sanity <laughs> because this is... <laughs> Mocking and scoffing at people that don't agree with you. I am questioning your sanity. Really, Barry? I'm insane because I think we're not at the end of time as we know it. I'm insane? Are you the most arrogant person that ever lived? This is a world on the brink. And okay, Barry, the world has been on the brink many times in its history. Do you think back in the early 1900s before World War I that it was on the brink and people knew it? Do you think after the Great Depression and then World War II, do you think the world was on the brink back then? And did you go to school? Did people show you the tens of millions of people who died at the hands of dictators in those days? Maybe hundreds of millions and tens of millions more on the battlefield. Barry, we are not on the brink. If we are on the brink, Barry, it ain't the first time in history it's happened. I, I hate to break this news to you, Mr. Self-Centered. You are not the center of the whole universe. God did not put you on this planet to make you the center of all of his works and all of his dealings with mankind as you sit in your house in Missouri and say so. Uh, unbelievable, this guy. We're on the brink. So what? Okay, we're on the brink. And? And? How do you know that this is the last brink we're ever going to be on, Barry? Do you know that? Because you just said you do. You just said in the other video. I know. We know. <laughs> if you think we have another 10 years, you're insane. <laughs> And I think if you're not seeing that, I think you have your head in the sand. Yeah, see, so shut up. Just shut up, arrogant jerk. Give me a break. Everybody's got their head in the sand if they don't agree with this guy. All these people with their proclamations. And if you don't agree with me, well, you're a mocker. You got your head in the sand. You're insane. The reason I think there's also a danger to that teaching. Yeah, it's dangerous. Is that can really impact the urgency of the gospel. If Satan can get people thinking that uh, the rapture of the church is a long way off and we've got another, you know, 50 years of difficulty and tribulation to deal with before any of that happens, people can postpone the urgency of the gospel and say, well, I've got a lot of time to accept Jesus. Are you serious? The only urgency there is in the entire gospel message is the rapture? Find me a single verse where Paul the apostle said anything like that, or Peter, or anybody. Get saved now, the rapture is coming in our lifetime. One verse, Barry. You don't think there's enough urgency in the fact that you've said other videos, you don't know the day of your own death? Isn't that urgent enough? If people aren't going to accept the fact that they could die tomorrow, given the school shootings and all the world on the brink that you're mentioning, you don't think they're gonna you think they're gonna listen to well, you know, a bunch of us are gonna be suddenly missing bodily from the planet, so you better get on board. I mean, you're delusional. And you know what? You can have your delusion all you want, Barry, but quit getting on YouTube and chastising other people who don't agree with you and calling them mockers and calling them head in the sand. You know, it's ridiculous. I'm going to finish Barry's little segment up here with this unbelievable comment that he makes at the end. I think it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous doctrine to say that we have 20 or 30 years left. I just, I don't, I think we got to be really cautious with that. Um, is it possible? Of course, anything's possible. What, what, um, what? The Lord is sovereign over all. Wait, but wait, I wait, think... wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. I just, I just watched you go through minute after minute, statement after statement of how we are at the end times and it's dangerous, dangerous doctrine to preach that we are not in the end times. Is it possible though? Well, yeah, sure. Sure, anything's possible. In another video, he says, do we have, you know, could it happen this year, 2017? Sure, it could happen. I believe it could. It absolutely could happen. Is it for sure going to happen? No, no, you know, it's not for sure, but, you know. Wah, wah, wah. 
waffling back and forth over and over and over again. These people don't know what they're talking about, but they want you to think they know what they're talking about. And then if you dare to question them, you're a mocker. Here's another guy I, I used to watch all the time. Hilarious. This guy, <laughs> something big is about to happen. Are you ready? False prophet. April 3rd, 2014. But the Bible makes it clear. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, or chapter 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, and we are absolutely living in those days right now. Absolutely. It also says, All who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Absolutely will live and live in the last days. Without a doubt, Without we a doubt. are in those days right now. Now listen to this. Ready? We in America right now, our persecution is non-existent. If you want to call... <laughs> Did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what he just said? We are in those days right now as Christians. I mean, you know, except in America. We're not being persecuted. <laughs> are we in the days or are we not in the days, Kenny? I mean, see again, absolutely we're in the last days. Absolutely. Here he is again. Restlessly reporting, Kenny Jacobs from the field. Just need you to know that the world as you know it is history. Uh, four years ago. But again, we are absolutely on the brink. This is it. This we are coming down it? to the wire. Uh, let's continue on. A little more scripture. Absolutely, we're on the brink. Coming down to the wire, man. Absolutely. You know, I, I want you to understand something here. The, the word absolutely actually has meaning, Kenny, and others who say it, absolutely means something, doesn't it? See, these guys like to play with language because they have to use terminology that's urgent. Otherwise, nobody's going to watch you, right? That's how you get people to watch you. You use urgent language in your, in your videos. People like to hear that urgently it's going to happen and it's absolute. Except you know you're not right. You know you can't say something is absolute like this. So then you do this. Papers, articles that we see, that we read on a nightly basis and the things we see happening around the world, in many cases, are fulfilling Bible prophecy to the letter. Yep. Yeah. So he just said, many articles we read in the paper are fulfilling Bible prophecy to the letter. We are absolutely in the last days, he says. These things in the newspaper are fulfilling. They are fulfilling. They don't look like they're fulfilling. They don't, might not be fulfilling. No, they are fulfilling it to the letter, he says. And so, again, I am going to continue to sound the alarm that we're living in the last days. Oh, and uh, I'm going to continue to share the gospel message that Jesus Christ is the only source of salvation. Okay, good. We are saved by grace through faith in the finished work on the cross of Jesus Christ. Amen. And whether the return of Jesus is tomorrow or 200 years from now. Uh, what? <laughs> Kenny, one more time. Absolutely has a meaning. I know you don't care what that meaning is. I know it doesn't bother you to throw words around like absolutely. When you don't really mean absolutely, we're in the last days. Because you just said, well, it could be 200 years from now. Whether it's tomorrow or 200 years from now. Kenny, if it's 200 years from now, we're not absolutely in the last days, are we? In fact, if it's 200 years from now, we are not in the last days, period. Yet you claim absolutely it's going to happen. Maybe. <laughs> Does this not strike you as dishonest? Again, hobbyist, loves what he's doing. It's really fun to talk about this stuff. Hey, Kenny, why don't you stick with it on the weekends with your buddies when you're golfing? And talk about it, you know, with your Christian buddies and speculate all you want on the golf course amongst the four of you, all right? Don't get on YouTube and tell the entire world who's actually listening for truth. People in this world need truth. They don't need lies about what the word absolutely means or the word soon means or the word very, very soon. You can't say something is absolutely going to happen and then say it might not happen. Those two things do not go together, Kenny. They are opposites. If you don't want to use the word absolutely because you want to say it couldn't, it might be 200 years, great. 
but you can't say absolutely and then say it's not absolutely. One of those things isn't correct. And just to show you that it's not limited to the lower end of the ladder in the speculation community, here's a couple of videos where J.D. Farag himself, the man, the master prophecy man who's taking over the reins for Hal Lindsey, I guess, because you got to have a superstar out there. So here's the superstar, J.D. Farag, absolutely no different than any of these other people. So if you'll kindly permit me to, I want to argue the case that the aforementioned headlines Perfect. prove beyond any reasonable doubt that all the prophetic puzzle pieces are now in place. And I'm going to borrow a word from the headline we just read. It is inevitable. Mm. It's just a matter of time. It's not if, it's when and how soon. Unbelievable. So he just said it's inevitable. All of the pieces are in place. There's no question here in his mind that they're all in place. I mean, let me remind you of something. J.D. Farag is a pastor. He's standing behind a pulpit. It is his job to deliver the truth as he knows it, at least, because we're all fallible. But he's supposed to stand up there behind a pulpit in that authoritative position and declare what he knows to be true. And here he is declaring that he knows this is true. I mean, he didn't say anything like, listen, guys, I could be completely wrong about everything I've said up to this point for the last 10 years. He's never said any of that. He said, I believe we're in the last days. Now, check it out for yourselves in the Bible. He throws that out every once in a while. Beaverians, check it out, you know. And of course, if you try to say anything on his channel like, hey, J.D., you might be wrong, bam, you're blocked immediately. You're never going to talk to that guy again. Yeah, really, really? You want us to be Bereans, but shut the heck up if we find different conclusions, right? Or if something happens like, I don't know, time passes by and no rapture. Of course, you know, try to hold him accountable for what he's actually saying. Every couple of, you know, a couple times a year, he gets up here and says, don't, don't, don't call me an expert, okay? I don't want to be called an expert. Don't put that on me. Okay, I won't call you an expert, JD. I'll call you what you are. You're a hobbyist. I realize that there's so much we don't know what? about what's really happening in Syria, but what we do know is that Isaiah 17, 1 tells us Damascus, Syria will be destroyed as a city. Uh, I am of the belief that we are on the cusp of seeing this specific detailed prophecy about to be fulfilled right before our very eyes. Also, we don't really know what's going on with Russia and with them, Iran. But what we do know is that Ezekiel 38 says they will lead an alliance of nations and attack Israel via Syria from the north. Okay, I'm going to end with this. So I want to make a point here. April 15th, 2018. This is a year ago. Prior to, this is six months before Donald Trump said, I'm withdrawing troops from Syria. I'm getting the United States out of Syria. After which, this guy and, J and Jan Markell and the other bigwigs jumped off their chairs and yelled, oh my goodness, this is prophecy coming to pass right now. Now we're on the cusp because Trump is pulling out and now there's no one there to stop Russia from attacking Israel. Sounds good, right? Except six months before this, right here, and a year before this, and four years before this, J.D. Farag stood there and said, we are on the cusp. Everything is in place. He just said that in the last video. Every puzzle piece is in place. If every puzzle piece was in place, then why did Trump need to withdraw anything? Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Now all the puzzle pieces are in place. Oh, okay. See, it's, it, it doesn't matter what happens. Every week, these guys can get up there and make a claim that this is what it means. I know the future. I know what God knows. I mean, I, I don't really know. I don't, I, it's absolutely true that it's, we're in the, but, but maybe not. We need to declare that we are in the last days. It is the time. We're in that season, but don't get, don't get, don't get crazy about it.
just I, I I hope this this sort of shows you now. Yes, I'm taking little I'm lifting sound bites out of their videos. Absolutely, they said it though. I'm not changing their words. You want to watch their videos? Go watch their videos. There's there's thousands of them. They all say the same thing, ad nauseum, over and over and over again. And then months go by, years go by, nothing happens. We're all just supposed to forget. Are we supposed to take this seriously as from God or not? Is this the word of God being preached? Or is it nothing more than a speculative hobby? I think it's the latter, sadly. And I think they really should stop. I hope that's clear. Take care. We'll see you soon.